Welcome to A Journey Back in Time with The Dick Van Dyke Show, a classic comedy series that started in 1961. This show takes you into the life of Rob Petrie, a TV writer, and his work and home adventures. The show is known for its clever writing and the charming cast. It has moments that will make you laugh, some that might shock you, and a few that could even bring a tear to your eye. As we dive into the world of this beloved series, I want to ask you, the viewer, what memories do you hold dear from The Dick Van Dyke Show? Maybe you remember watching episodes with your family or it inspired you to chase your dreams. Whatever your story, we'd love to hear it in the comments below. Now, let's talk about the stars of the show. While I don't have personal experiences, many viewers have been touched by the talents of actors like Dick Van Dyke and Mary Tyler Moore. They brought their characters to life in a way that has stayed with fans for years. Who was your favorite actor from the series? Share with us your cherished memories and how this show has left its mark on your life. Keep watching as we explore more surprising and heartfelt facts about the Dick Van Dyke Show. Fix Richie's toast. No, you fix Richie's toast. Well, what are you going to do? The Dick Van Dyke Show stands as a pinnacle in the landscape of television sitcoms, setting a high standard for its genre. It presents a cast of flawed yet endearing characters, navigating real-life issues with a sense of love and camaraderie that transcends the screen. The chemistry between Dick Van Dyke and Mary Tyler Moore, portraying a couple that continually finds ways to refresh their relationship, offers a heartwarming example of affection and mutual respect. Despite the show's reflection of its era's societal norms, it remains a beloved classic. The ensemble, including Maury Amsterdam, Richard Deacon, Rose Marie, and Anne Morgan Gilbert, brings a dynamic range of humor and relatability, ensuring a timeless appeal. With its clean humor and memorable moments, the show has earned its place as a treasured piece of television history, providing laughter and light-hearted entertainment across its five seasons. Look, tell Richie I'll put the baseball cards under his pillow. You'll be rehearsing with Miss Blake again, huh? Oops, there goes another. In the late 1940s, Dick Van Dyke left the familiar settings of the West Coast entertainment scene for Atlanta, Georgia, alongside his best friend Phil Erickson and wife Margie. It was in this new city that the couple welcomed their sons, Christian and Barry, into the world. Meanwhile, Rose Marie's life had its own musical connection. Her husband Bobby Guy played the lead trumpet for the NBC Orchestra on The Tonight Show. A subtle nod to the show's connections can be found in Rob's office, where a keen eye might spot a photo featuring the Sands Marquis, highlighting Danny Thomas, who not only graced the stage, but also played a role behind the scenes as a producer. Five dollars I gave you. <laughs> joking no no really it embarrasses me to say it but i want my hair before it became a beloved series the pilot episode titled head of the family laid the groundwork featuring carl reiner as rob petrie barbara Britton as laura petrie morty gunty as buddy sorrell and sylvia miles as sally rogers the show's lead dick van dyke was admired by his own heroes buster keaton and stan laurel who both appreciated his work on the series another notable figure ross elliott forged a significant connection with William Allen during their Mercury Players days, leading to roles in Allen's films such as Tarantula, As Young As We Are, and The Lively Set. Taking a significant risk, Dick Van Dyke left his Tony Award-winning role in Bye Bye Birdie to join the cast of a new television show. His gamble paid off, securing his place on the small screen. Larry Matthews, who played Richie Petrie, now owns the desk that once belonged to Carl Reiner's character on the show. Despite not being a focal point of the series, the characters Mel Cooley, Buddy Sorrell, and Alan Brady shared a common cultural background, all being Jewish. This aspect added a subtle layer of diversity to the show's dynamic. He only looked funny to make people laugh. Well, all I can say is I'm glad that he takes after Laura. Daddy, did you bring anything? In a twist of life imitating art, Mary Tyler Moore, then 24, misrepresented her age to secure the role of Laura, claiming to be older. This mirrored a storyline where Laura and Rob Petrie must remarry due to her initial age deception. Meanwhile, Jerry Van Dyke, Known for his family ties to the entertainment industry, brought his own charm to the show. The character Alan Brady's well-guarded secret about his toupee, humorously unveiled in the series, was actually inspired by Max Liebman, a producer known for his own hairpiece. 
These behind-the-scenes anecdotes offer a glimpse into the off-screen dynamics that subtly influence the on-screen humor and relationships. I did you really inspire it? Well, you know the old saying, behind every great man. Good morning, son. Where's mommy? In the early days of television comedy, a show emerged that would leave a lasting impression on the genre. At the heart of the series was Dick Van Dyke, an actor whose humor was greatly influenced by the legendary Stan Laurel. Van Dyke, who had the fortune of befriending Laurel after a simple phone book search, later honored his mentor by speaking at Laurel's funeral. The series itself was a reimagining of Carl Reiner's earlier pilot, Head of the Family, with Reiner's portrayal of Rob Petrie laying the groundwork for what would become a classic. Offscreen, Van Dyke faced his own battles, overcoming a significant smoking habit of up to 40 cigarettes daily to become a dedicated non-smoker, setting an example for personal change and public health. Thank you very much. Have this is Mel Cooley, our producer. Well, it's a pleasure to have such a distinct. In the early 60s, a popular show took an unconventional approach to filming three of its episodes. The first deviation occurred with an episode that portrayed a 1920s lifestyle using special filming techniques that required a closed set. Another episode, marked by national tragedy, was filmed in solitude as the cast mourned the loss of President Kennedy. The third, a Western-themed episode, was shot on location away from the familiar studio audience. During this era, Jerry Van Dyke, despite a rocky start with co-star Craig T. Nelson on a later show, developed a lasting friendship that continued until his passing. Additionally, the show paid homage to personal history, with a character named after the producer's late aunt, reflecting a touch of personal legacy within the fictional narrative. Subject. <laughs> this is an impression of Buddy walking in. in his personal life, Dick Van Dyke's political views were clear when he expressed a strong stance during the 2016 presidential election, stating his determination to prevent Donald Trump from winning. His family experiences also shaped his public roles. The loss of his granddaughter in 1987 led him to advocate for awareness of Ray's syndrome. On a lighter note, his character Rob Petrie was affectionately called Lefty by Jerry, a nod to Van Dyke's own left-handedness. Gee, I, I don't know what to say. Well, what? In the early 1960s, a comedy show broke new ground with its lead actor's talent for physical comedy. Dick Van Dyke, the star, brought his unique brand of humor to life, crafting his own comedy routines and physical gags that became a hallmark of the show. His portrayal of Rob Petrie earned him a spot among the greatest TV fathers, reflecting the relatable and endearing qualities of his character. Despite his later acclaim as a dancer in film, Van Dyke had no formal dance training and only started dancing in his 30s, showcasing a natural aptitude that would charm audiences worldwide. It's called a twassel. A twassel! What is it? It's a combination of twisting and wrestling. Viewers of the classic show often engaged in playful wagers about whether the central character would trip over an ottoman in his home. This became a notable aspect of the show's opening sequence. Alan Melvin, recognized for his role in a 1955 comedy series, had his name featured in a novel and its subsequent film adaptation, both titled The Manchurian Candidate. Interestingly, the lead actor of the show is an avid fan of the 2005 comedy series The Office, highlighting his appreciation for television comedies that followed in later years. Look, I'm getting fed up. On a day marked by tragedy, Dick Van Dyke pressed on to record songs I like, despite the shock of President Kennedy's assassination. The session was completed, but not without a profound sense of loss. In the world of comedy, Alan Brady's character was not a direct portrayal of any single individual, but a blend of the abrasive natures of Milton Berle and Jackie Gleason, both known for their harsh treatment of writers. Meanwhile, a curious moment in the show's opening sequence presents Laura introducing Rob to Buddy and Sally as if they were strangers, despite the fact that they worked together, highlighting a humorous oversight in the storyline. Well, you see, I had a theatrical agent in the Strand Theater building. I, and I, I used wait to... just a moment, Mr. Shell, I tell you.